up under here and grab my envelope out. Okay. Yes. Been here since before I was born. Aww. Uh, All right. Thank you. And I'm going to just take this and sit down with it. You're awesome. It is time. When they seriously get done with that, give it to me. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, St. Mark. I have a couple of things to go over and your announcements, as I always say. Yes, Miss Linda? You're cold. Did we hear that? We are cold. <laughs> or not? Where is it? Oh, he's on the phone. There you go. We'll take care of that. Uh, we have a few announcements that we need to make. As I always say, keep a hold of your bulletins. Put them up on your refrigerator. They are good as gold. There is a lot of stuff happening, especially with our youth and children's programs and musics. <clears throat> um, MYF is meeting tonight at 530. Uh, we're getting back in the swing of things. Um, we have the Suzanne Wesley Circle. It's going to happen on the 13th at 10 a.m. Uh, tweens lock-in. I'm going to bear our first tweens lock-in this Thursday. It's going to be so exciting with the, the youngins. It is too fun. Uh, Michelle, I have got in with me, and it's going to be amazing. <clears throat> yes, I did. <laughs> if we look a little ragged next Sunday, it's because we survived a tweens lock-in. Um, fundraiser for Emily, Logan, and Christian uh, is going on right now. We are selling tickets for a chicken bog. Um, this is to help them out with the, um, it, it is for next weekend uh, for their National Honors Choir. Um, the dinner will be $7, but we are selling tickets now, and that will be at the 9 and 11 a.m. services. Um, uh, the 2015 calendar uh, is available in the narthex for your groups and committees please make sure that if you have anything going on throughout the year write it down in there so we can make sure that we don't step on each other's toes especially if you have any fundraisers um, SPRC is meeting on February 3rd at 7 p.m. we are having an education and nurture meeting this is not in the bulletin but uh, education and nurture meeting on January 25th at 2 p.m. and I would appreciate anyone that is interested in the youth and education programs, the youth and children's programs to please be there. And that's the 25th at 2. Yes, ma'am. Just a reminder of about youth times. We're starting it back again today at 445. So I hope we have all our youth timers today at 445. Do you want to announce the rest of your music? Uh, um, Sounds good. Revolution's coming up, youth. Uh, please make sure that your money is in as uh, soon as you can. Uh, I'm making sure that we have a place to stay, so it's nice to have that money. Um, Hands and Feet Weekend is also coming up. If you would like to go, I need to know by February 8th. Uh, that's going to be at the end of the month, uh, 27th through the, th uh, the first of the next month, so March. So I'm sorry, February 27th through March 1st. And I need them. I need to know if you're going by the eighth. Um, and we have some other fun stuff coming up. Uh, congregation, if you can, if you can help sponsor us with meals for our youth, we would appreciate it. If you go on the St. Mark website, there is a 
uh, sign up genius on the St. Mark website. You click on that and it'll prompt you what you need to do next. And it'll send me an email of who is doing what for what day. So I would appreciate your help. If that is too much to do, not a problem. You can come to me and I can sign it up for you. And, or if you'd like to do donations, that's fine too. Um, am I missing anything else, Scarlett, or is it your turn? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, okay, yes, sir, go for it. And then I think we have Tim. Thank you. In my, there you are, Tim. I was looking for you. Come on up for a second uh, or speak. Uh, I'll look right here. I'll pretty loud. Uh, the uh, United Methodist Men will be putting an outreach box out in the middle of that. That outreach box is for anyone in the congregation or you know someone in your community that needs a hand. Not only for you want to not be changing the light bulb, not be putting up the Christmas decorations, not be changing batteries in the smoke detector, whatever it might be. Just put that in the box. Put that the name and the address and the phone number in the box. And we will open it. We will get to it. We've got a lot of energy in the, uh, in the events group. And we want to put that energy to, to work. Uh, we want to put a face, a face with the hand. And not just do something. So the other thing is uh, the Super Bowl Sunday Chili will be going, the tickets will be going on sale uh, next Sunday, 9 and 9 and 11 o'clock service. We'll be out in North X. Excellent. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? I have this sheet right here. It is not a sign-up sheet. Do not worry. Uh, this is an emergency contact sheet. Um, this is to make sure that your uh, your address and phone number and your email address is correct. That way, if we have anything going on, you will be aware of it. Uh, I will pass this along the pews, and you have one more week to make sure that this gets done. If I could pass it along this side and it comes back here up to the pulpit, that would be wonderful. Um, I think I have everything, except that I saw that we are now... I just saw it. Oh, the day school. I can't forget the day school. The day school is now open for registration for next year, so make sure you let everyone know that. We're still, of course, we're still open for business, but uh, we are accepting kiddos for next year now. So, um, anything else? You got it? I can say something. Yes. Um, those of you that attend Good Neighbors, Tim said that about the, the day school reminds me. It is my understanding that at our next meeting of the Good Neighbors, we are going to be blessed with a visit from some very short people from the day school who are going to come and sing to us. So, if you are available,
was beautiful, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, here are those. Don't forget these to you as well. Start these for the round. If anybody wants to join, pass it on. And my friends. Let us pray. Almighty God, in each other's faces, we see reflected your glory. Come and be among us, we pray, and show us who you are. Give us strength and courage to face this day and all our days for having been in your presence. In the name of Christ, we pray, amen. Ryan is going to come and share with us a word and then lead us in a liturgical prayer concerning stewardship. It's hot in here. Good morning. Good morning. We can turn either, if you see me, it's either stewardship time or Sakahatchee time, and it's not July, so. <laughs> How many of y'all just cringed when she said stewardship? Uh, I hope not. This is the first week of our stewardship program this year. It's called Living Each Day as a Steward. Uh, if you take a look in your bulletin, you should find a trifold uh, brochure. If there's not one in there, let me know, and we'll make sure to get one to you. But during the coming week, if you wouldn't mind just taking a look at that. And, um, you know, all jokes aside, a lot of us inwardly, inwardly groan when we hear the word stewardship program. Some of us outwardly groan, but that's okay. I've heard that, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, we incorrectly think that this will only be about giving money so we can pay the bills. Um, and perhaps that's been the experience that some of us have had in various congregations or even this congregation in years past, but that's really most unfortunate. Um, it's a pretty narrow and truly incorrect view of the conception of stewardship. Stewardship begins with an acknowledgement that God is the creator and owner of all things. He has created us, recreated us through his son, Jesus, who atoned for our sins by suffering and dying on the cross. This realization immediately results in gratitude to God, who so graciously gives us his gifts. As we verbally thank and praise him for his blessings, we find that we want to respond in, a more, in more tangible ways as well. To that end, we look for ways to serve, avenues through which we might use our talents, and purposes for which we can give our money. Our program, Living Each Day as a Steward, will last three weeks. 
today, our worship service and uh, earlier our Sunday school services focused on the steward's identity. Next week, our theme will be the steward's purpose. God did not save us just so we can sit here waiting for him to return. He has a plan for each of us individually and also collectively. And that is to bring him glory in all of our words and acts. Finally, during the third week, we'll talk about the stewardship, the steward's lifestyle. Stewardship, as we have said, is not a once a year event to be endured, but a total joyful experience of living a life that honors our Lord. We pray that each of you will be present at worship and at our Bible studies for all three weeks of the program. Let us give, let us, I'm sorry, let me leave you with these words from 1 Peter 4 through 10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. And if you would uh, turn to me, turn to the first page of your bulletin, and there is a stewardship prayer. God, you have honored us with the opportunity to be stewards of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to carry out the task which you give us faithfully and responsibly. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being your stewards and help us to live each day as stewards. Right into that, didn't I? As your stewards, we pray that you will fill us with your wisdom and strength so that we use our time, talents, and treasures in ways that glorify you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being your stewards and help us to live each day as stewards. Dear Jesus, in your ministry here on earth, you became our model for stewardship. You lived the perfect life of stewardship in our place. Because of your love, sacrifice, and obedience, we are delivered from the requirements of the law to stewardship motivated by grace. Help Lord, thank you for the privilege of being stewards and help us to live each day as stewards. Help us, Lord, to be faithful instruments through which you work. Through our hands and feet, you bring love and care to the needy. Through our lips, you tell others of your life-saving gospel. And through our minds, hearts, and checkbooks, you support the work of your church. Lord, Lord thank, thank you for the privilege of being stewards and help us to live each day as stewards. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let us remember the source of all our many blessings as we stand and sing together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 400.
Let us then with one heart and one voice affirm that which we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated as the children come forward for a special time? And if y'all will go back, go find prayer requests and bring those with you, please.
to be a good steward in my home, in my school, in my church, and in God's beautiful world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I took notes. As our children are leaving, those with permission may go to Children's Chapel. There they go. And the rest of us will sing together, Jesus, draw me close. As we sing, Jesus, draw me close, we, the last words are, I desire to worship and obey. To truly commit ourselves to obeying God's will is a terrifying thing sometimes. And so we should include that in our prayers. Because God asks us to do things that are hard, sometimes things that make us uncomfortable, and definitely things that move us out of our normal, comfortable spaces. So let us pray that we would obey and worship with all our hearts. And let us pray for the Dodds and Kopenick families. Let's pray for those who have been victims of robberies. and There have been a few lately. We pray for those who have been touched by the many drive-by shootings and other shootings in our city. We pray for the people of France in their time of fear and terrorism. We pray for Gil Bourne, for Paul Ulm and Wesley Bryant. We pray for Betty Fincher, Dean James, Hannah and family, for Brittany Ropp, Carol Jean Atwater, Francis Bledsoe, Ann Willis, Doug Williams, Rex and Pat Connor, for Alice Filiaw, for our church, our youth, and our country. For Sandy Anderson, Linda Sheely, Gary Sheely, Brian Moody, and Hannah Warren. For Valerie Sutton, Linda Curry, Beverly Johnson, Vicki Davidson. For Timmy Linker, for Hannah Warren and family, Samantha, Cody, Zachary. For Beverly Poston, for everyone who has the cold, the flu, and asthma, and allergies, and what all this stuff going around. For Carla, Meyer, and the Hattery family. For Margie and Burnell Schuler, Kevin Richburg, Steve and Kitty Duncan, the Cooter family, the Power family. For Tommy and Pat Massillon as they pray for the continued health of, and we pray for Pat's aunt as well who's had a stroke. For Marsha Schubert in the death of her husband Phil. For Pat Persons, Becky Bell as she waits for a kidney match. For Homer and Helen Treadway, William Treadway, Doris Williams, Janet Wagoner, Steve Johnson, and Don Cobblestone. And we pray for our church that we would be the people God calls us to be that we would make a difference in the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the depths of our souls, we cry to you, praying that you would forgive us our sins, praying that you would give us hope, 
praying that you would give us direction and praying for peace in our souls and in this world. In your mercy, O oh God, hear our prayers for ourselves and for these that we've mentioned. Hear our prayers for those situations and names that we've not named aloud. Hear our prayers for victims of violent crime and of hate. God, this is your world. And we believe it with all of our hearts in your kingdom to come. But in mercy, can it start now, please? Help us to be a part of the beginning of your kingdom on earth, to show peace and love to the world, to follow Christ wherever he leads. These things we pray in his holy name as we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. <coughs> Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord our God with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
Let us continue to worship in the singing of Seek Ye First, number 405. <laughs> And please be seated as Bob comes forth to share with us from 1 Corinthians. Please join with me in the prayer of illumination as it appears in your bulletin. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with transforming joy what you say to us today. Amen. Scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2. I'll be reading from the Revised Standard Edition. Now concerning the contribution for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. On the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and save, as he may prosper, so that contributions need not be made when I come. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are indeed in that time of stewardship again, and truly some people do feel uncomfortable. If you hear stewardship, as Ryan said, and you just kind of start groaning because of our misconceptions and our misunderstandings, and we've been misdirected about what stewardship is. So as soon as we hear the word, it just goes negative. We think it's just all about money, or more precisely, that the church is out of money and we need to get more money so we can pay the bills. But y'all, there's a whole lot more to being a good steward than money. So, uh, you know, at the heart of stewardship is your personal, your relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, and, you know, there's... Whenever you are being a good steward, you will grow in faith and you will grow in grace and grow closer to Jesus Christ. The, the goal of the whole stewardship thing is for all of us to grow in our relationship with Christ and be aware of how as we draw closer to Christ and become more like Christ, how that affects all of our lives in every single aspect. So for right now, put all your, your former notions and ideas and preconceived things and misunderstandings and let's start over. Let's start by talking about stewardship, getting all, going all the way back to God's word. What does God say about being a good steward? Well, first of all, it's God that makes us stewards. God has called us and chosen us and created us as stewards. God put us in this role way back in Genesis. Have dominion over the earth, God said. 
And, and you got to be a steward before you can actually do stewardship, and we'll get to that. But, you know, Mary was right whenever she was talking about all the ways that the children can be involved in being good stewards by recycling, picking up trash, not wasting water, not wasting electricity because that wastes fossil fuels, taking care of textbooks, taking care of your stuff. Um, clean, taking care of the pews, cleaning up after yourself, putting things away, don't litter. And she didn't mention this, but I'll bring it up. Today's Human Trafficking Day in the United States. By taking care of each other, protecting each other, protecting the vulnerable who are trafficked across the borders day in and day out, being aware of how people are abused and exploited, those are things of good stewardship that go way beyond pocketbooks. God has established that we are to be stewards. Who we are determines what we do. Everything we do, everything we say, everywhere we go comes from our sense of identity. So who are you? If we are God's people, we are God's stewards. And that part of our identity shapes how we live. As stewards, we oversee and we manage everything that God has given us, everything that we are and everything that we have. Then we see that it's used in the most efficient and useful and careful manner possible. Good stewards are not wasteful. Good stewards don't litter. Good stewards take care of things. It is service to God from the perspective of being a manager of what's been given. Dr. Griever said, and I think this is beautiful, Christian stewardship is what I do after I say, I believe. It's the response of my whole life to Jesus. And out of gratitude for that love that, that meant death on the cross, it's the giving of everything that I am and everything that I have to Christ and to use as he directs. It's total commitment. Once you say, I believe, then how you live is stewardship. And, and so it's much, much more than what we might have thought coming in. And our stewardship, it, we see how God has loved us and sacrificed for us, and that shapes our stewardship because we go from being self-centered to being God-centered. You know, we notice in our text that whenever Paul gave, gave the instruction for the churches, he's given a new identity. He, got, he says, you know, we, we are God's children, and we're supposed to be good stewards. And, and he talks about how we are to use our time and abilities and resources, our very lives, in, as to be good stewards. So how are you going to... Decide how much of your time and abilities and resources to give back to God in, in response to God's work. In, in God's word, Paul says some very specific things. He said, on the first day of the week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper so that there are no collections when I come. Now, part of that is he didn't want them at the last minute scrambling around to find something. But he also goes on to explain that there should be a reason to give, that we're motivated, that it should be just a part of who we are, that every week we set something aside to be used for God, by God, through the church. The whole chapter, before we got to the part that Bob read, talks about how Christ's death and resurrection shapes us and, and reminds us that we too will rise from death to new life. And that motivates us to be concerned about the spiritual and physical well-being of others and inspires generosity in us. We love because he first loved us. So we live each day as stewards with changed hearts. We're not all about ourselves. We're about God. We're about God's world. And that changes how we approach everything in our lives. We live as stewards in grateful response to Christ's sacrifice. You see, he loved us so much till, as one story says, we're twice twice gods. There's a story that'll explain that a little bit about a boy that lived near the ocean. 
and who loved boats. He loved sailboats, and he decided to make his own model sailboat, but he didn't want to go buy a kit and throw something together. He wanted to do it the old-fashioned way and really take his time and cut out each board carefully and, and shape it, and he did it. It was slow work. He would do a little bit today, and then he'd have to put it in a vise grip or whatever and let it set, and then he'd come back to it. He started in the summer, but it was deep winter whenever he finally finished, and it was beautiful. It was three feet, and it had the three masts and the sails, and it was gorgeous. And he waited all winter long to take, take it out to, to the ocean once he finally got it finished. And that spring, on the first pretty day, he took it down and he sat it in the water and it began to bobble a little bit and then it began to sail and the perfect wind just caught those sails and it began to sail on out to sea and it was beautiful and wonderful. But he forgot. He forgot to provide a way for the boat to get back, to pull his boat back in. And he stood there with tears running down his face as his boat sailed on out to sea. He loved that boat. It was a part of himself. <coughs> well, several months later, he was walking downtown and he looked in a window and he saw his boat. It was beaten up. It needed some repairs and needed some work done to it, but it was his boat. And, and the merchant, the person in that store, he'd bought it from a sailor who'd bought it from a guy who'd bought it from a guy, and he wasn't about just to give it to this little boy who said it was his boat. The boy had to buy it back. So he went home and he counted through all of the money he'd saved, but it wasn't enough. So he started working, and any little odd job he could find, he'd work, and he worked, and he worked, and he worked, and he worked. And it was several months later before he saved up enough money. And he went and bought his boat. <coughs> And he picked that boat up and he held it close to his heart and, and he said, now you're twice mine. I made you and now I've bought you back. We are twice gods. First God made us and then by the holy and precious blood of Jesus Christ who shed his blood and gave his life for us on Calvary, he bought us back again. The price has been paid. And he's forgiven us our sins. He's forgiven us of those things for which we've repented and is prepared and offers forgiveness for all those things, even if we've been unforgiving. He's given us a new identity. God has said, you are mine, my children. The love of God in which we see in that forgiveness, that's, that's our stewardship, that we share that love with the world. Yet, even though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. We know the great love the Heavenly Father has for us, by the very fact of our salvation brought by his son, Jesus Christ. And so we give ourselves to the Lord because we know the grace of Christ and we recognize that the needs of ministry in extending God's church and the needs of those around us, and we cheerfully and willingly give. We cheerfully and willingly give of our, of our time, of our talents, of our resources, of ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it is written, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We give cheerfully of ourselves, of our time, of our energy, of our resources, and yes, of our purses in response to God's call on our lives because we are, good, we are stewards. We give, and you know, we taught at the beginning of worship about some of those things. The reader's program that I shared with you, we talked about the person that we gave something toward and shared with an envelope. We talked about how we're going to be at doing a chicken bog dinner. We talked about how we are going to be in stewardship in many ways through many opportunities here at church, but there are other opportunities. 
to be cheerful in giving of our time and our energy and our resources. How much should we give? The Old Testament law was 10%, but that was the law. And in Christ, Christ has fulfilled the requirements of that law. So now we give through our gospel identity, living under grace. As new creatures, we're not limited to 10%. That's where we begin. 10% is our beginning. Real giving starts after that. As such, you know, we are the channels through which God sends blessings into the world to meet needs according to God's will. We live each day as stewards. How you doing with that? Have you said, I believe? then how are you living as a steward? Amen. So stewards, let us prayerfully rise to sing together our final hymn of this day, which is When We Are Living, number 356. Let us rise and sing. It's a pretty one.